Greetings, greetings, beautiful ones. So I'm dropping a gem today that is more a healing gem, right? I want to talk about courageous conversations. Now, what is a co courageous conversation, Imani? I am so glad you asked. Well, a courageous conversation is a conversation that um, has the potential for tension and conflict, which means it has a high potential for building intimacy, growth, and healing. And it requires you to show up for yourself. It requires you to show up for yourself and to be present in vulnerability, strength, and authenticity. These are the things that are difficult things you need to say to someone. Um, maybe there's a hard conversation that you need to have with an employee, a partner, a family member, one where you are putting up a boundary or you are making a request or you are really asking for a change in behavior or more importantly, you are simply expressing a hurt. And this is a courageous conversation. Why do I call it a courageous conversation? Because you know what? It's so much easier to just walk away, to avoid it, to be passive aggressive, right? To really feel the hurt of it, but not operate in truth. It's easier to do that, or at least it seems easier to do that. But the real benefit for a courageous conversation is not the other person, it's the peace that it gives you. It is the sense of knowing that you showed up for yourself. And let me tell you something. There is no interpersonal, no better intrapersonal benefit than showing up for yourself, being your own advocate and saying, listen, this is what hurt me. Now, it doesn't mean that at the end of every courageous conversation, there will be a mended relationship. That's actually not necessarily an end goal for every courageous conversation. Sometimes the, co the courageous conversation is just about being heard, about taking the, the, the experience out of your throat and out of your mouth and being able to take a breath in it is so important. There is a good sense of self-esteem when you can show up for yourself. Now, here's a really good sign that you need to have a courageous conversation is when you are having a conversation in the shower, right? You're having a conversation about what you should have said, could have said, didn't say, would have said, if you could have, would have. That is telling you right there, there's a courageous conversation on your horizon so i want to help you today yes i do yes i want to help you today i want to give you some tips some bullets on how to have that courageous conversation in a way that maintains dignity for you and the other person or persons but also gives you an opportunity to stand in your authenticity and to stand in your truth. So here are my tips for a courageous conversation. First, to show up with your advocate and not your fighter. Oh, she gonna say that one again. To show up with your advocate self and not your fighter self. You know that saying, I always say, because it, it comes from one of my favorite movies, to a hammer, everything looks like a nail. If you show up in your neck rolling fighter self, get looking for a fight, guess what you're going to find? You're going to find a fight. A warrior knows when to pick up the sword and when to leave it on the ground. And that is the difference is between the warrior and the fighter. The fighter is always coming in fist balled up and ready. Uh, and you're always looking for a fight. But a warrior knows that there's a time and a place for everything. And when you show up in your advocate self, you can take a stance of advocating for yourself without having to stand in the fighter mode. So 
that's the first thing. The second thing is to set an intention for the conversation. I think people misunderstand setting a t an intention. It sends a signal to your brain, to your body that this is our purpose. My purpose is to come in with healing. My purpose is to listen. My person, my purpose is to be understood and to understand. And your co courageous conversation might have to happen in two parts, right? One part where you get heard and then another part where the other person is heard. That's the other thing. I always tell people, put a time limit on it, right? Because some people can do marathon conversations and they never help because there's so much you can take in at once, right? So help yourself win. Help yourself win. So that would be... The second thing, the third thing is bullet point your thoughts. We always think, well, I know what I want to say. I know what the truth is. Well, you know what your truth is and it's real and it's valid. But the other piece is that when you get in that conversation and all the blood is rushing, we're not talking about random, simple conversations. If it is a courageous conversation, that means that there is some emotionality at stake, right? It has the potential for high emotion. So help yourself win by bullet, point, bullet pointing your thoughts so that you don't lose track of your thoughts, so that you don't walk away going, man, I meant to say so and so or thus and such and I didn't do it I forgot my emotions got the best of me the adrenaline got high because when you are triggered when that amygdala is triggered when those other parts of the brain that are impacted uh, by trauma and trigger being triggered are, are stimulated or activated, it can be very hard to hold on to the memory or all of those things because all of this energy and adrenaline is rushing and you will forget. You will forget. So help yourself win. Help yourself win. So that's three. Four is speak for yourself. Tell your truth. That's all you have to be there to do is tell your truth. It's valid. It's real. And it deserves to be heard. But that also means you have to own the feelings. If you feel hurt, say the words, I felt hurt when this thing happened. It may, I felt this way when it happened. Not you are, not the accusatory you, but the ownership I. So you are owning your feelings because guess what? No one can refute your own feelings. But if you, what you say is, I feel like you are trash. Well, now that's not an actual feeling. So here's a tip I want to tell you. If you use the words, I feel, it's a simple, hold on, get the pen. Here it comes. If you use the words, I feel, make sure a feeling word comes after it, right? Because sometimes people say, I feel, and then they either have an attack after it or a thought after it, but it's not a feeling word. So, you know how they say on TV when the teachers are talking to the kids, use your words, use your words with intention and use them wisely. The next thing is reflect before responding. When you are getting ready to respond, remember that we all hear things filtered through our own schema. And sometimes you're responding to something that hasn't been said. You haven't been said, you haven't heard it. And yet you're responding to it because you're responding to language under the language. Really respond to what you just heard. And here's a way to help yourself. Say, what I hear you saying is, my sense is this, uh, or what I heard is, so on and so on. And see if you can actually reflect it back. If you can, then you heard it. If you didn't, then ask for clarity, right? Because you don't want to be responding to something that hasn't actually been said, right? That is not a useful um, act of, of communication. The final thing is, and this is really important, is leave room for your assumptions about what the other person thinks, about what the other person meant. Leave room for your assumptions to be wrong, right? If you wanna win, somebody, right, has to be willing to leave their assumptions behind them, you know? And to decide that, you know what, maybe I'm not absolutely right about what this other person feels. 
and maybe what I think to be their feeling and their thought and their intention is not that. So if you leave your intentions at home and you come in open and receptive and willing to listen and willing to speak with clarity and truth, then you have at least prepared the table for a good meal and the meal being a great conversation, a courageous conversation. Yep, it's that simple. It's very simple. Those steps that I gave you help to make it simple. It's simple, but it ain't easy. Although, let, let, let yourself have an opportunity to win at the conversation. Know that I'm always here for you. I'll be sending you lots of energy for your courageous conversation to clear your heart and your soul as you move forward and build intimacy, trust, and vulnerability, not just with others, but with yourself. My name is Imani Evans. I am the change maker and barrier breaker. Until next time, I wish you peace. I wish you love.